all right guys so in this session basically we are going to talk about how does pega stores data where does it store the data when you process a case right so the storage mechanism or data storage in pega is what we are going to cover okay so we have already learned that every concrete table every concrete class class has table attached to that okay now this concrete class and table this you can find out by opening the class definition so okay let me one cover one more thing and every case class the work class that we create okay work case class is concrete okay that means they all have a table we discussed about uh, the mechanism of uh, basically class group class group has the table and a lot of um, one or more classes belongs to that class group let's see how does it work in our case basically if you open the insurance plan that's the case type we have created if you open the definition of this so it is concrete which means it has a table now look at the class this class belongs to this class group which means that this is not the table class that is directly having the table but it is using the table attached to this class group so which is this one if you open the this class actually the definition of it so it is a class group that means it is itself it itself is having a table if you click on this test connection you will find the table name right now the demo case that we created that also belongs to the by default every case that you create they belongs to the work class group which means that the cases you create for an insurance plan or demo case they all are going to be stored into this table the b3 ims work how do you find the table mapping of course you on the cl class you click the basically test connection and you will find that out but there are instances related to the table and databases that identifies the class with table go to the record explorer sysadmin category and then data ta database tables and you will see that it has a mapping of every class and the corresponding table including this one the b3 ims work right that's what we created now open this and you will find that okay this is the database schema this is the table name if you want to change the table any point of time you will have to update this rule the database table rule so this uh, basically this is how the class and tables are mapped to each other <clears throat> second thing is when i'm creating a case whenever i'm creating a case for example we have created a lot of insurance cases we earlier learned about uh, having uh, huge having to use property to store the data we are still using the property for storing cid and other things new cast all those data so this is all getting stored in the table corresponding to this class so which is basically this table now let's open this table in the database and see what information it has you can run a query by clicking on this you have a query tool and then do select star from it can be any database here we have postgres in personal edition see a lot of properties are already there <coughs> The one that you had optimized earlier, those are coming up here. Okay, do you remember? Op basically, the ones that you created from the minus uh, minus one minute. We missed the navigation. Can you show that? So, the opening opening this. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. The, so you will have to go to the installation directory, Pega Personal Edition, PG SQL, mm -hmm. PG Admin Four, and Bin. Under that, you will have this exe. Just click on this, and it will open it in your browser. 
Okay, okay. Okay. You might have to just enter the password during the installation. We talked about that. So the password is going to be rules if you have said that correctly. Okay. All right. But where is the CID? The customer ID that is not there, but on every case we are creating that. Let me let me show you that. I'm creating a new case. I know we are using a different table for customer record, but CID, new cost, insurance type, these are the values and the approval list, these are the values that we are putting up on the case. Now when you submit, so this, sorry, DOB should be in the past, it is in the past 211. Yes, provide your customer ID. phone number okay now if you look at the clipboard the py work page has cid the py work page has insurance type the py work page has new cast where are these information going okay whenever you are opening the case it's coming up that means it must be stored and it is uh, an instance of this class right b3 ims work insurance plan that is insurance case which is getting stored in the table that we just opened up okay the customer data we are you leveraging data page basically to fetch that and update that so that is okay we understand that this information is going into another table that we see but where is the work object properties going and stored? Well, by default, they all are stored into blob on the same work table, unless you expose them for reporting. When you expose them for reporting, they are stored into a column in that table. So by default, the properties on a case are a property values basically are stored into blob format in pz py stream or py pz stream prop column let me check pvp pv sorry pz pv stream that's that's the property see this is binary data they all are binary okay so that means when you are running a query all those properties in the pv uh, pz pv stream cannot be directly used unless you compress uncompress this binary for that pega provides a function to uncompress but that's not always useful why do i want to open the record from this table basically column and compress and compress it all the time that's quite expensive that's why when you need to query on some properties you expose them you expose them means you expose them for reporting that means that they create another column in this table a flat flat column let's say that we need to report on the customer id <clears throat> or insurance type so right click on the customer id and click expose for reporting optimize for reporting now this one is going to create a cid, CID table a column okay in this table and this is a column uh, population job basically there will be a column population job which will run to uh, basically read every case and read cid from that case from this blob and populate the cid not only will cid be created as a column but the properties property will be read 
from this blob column and it will be populated let me show you so optimizing this for this class which means in this table basically we are going to have another column called cid and then the values of the cid will be populated column population job it is running and it will populate for every case there are 62 cases finish it up let's run it again cid is popular available now the values are not available yet the column population job is running so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just search cid select cid it's still not populated so column population is still running now see the cids are being populated for every case where you have provided it okay right so why does pega use blob that's the question why does Pe pega use the data to be stored in the blob and what are these columns then well there are several columns important for reporting on the case or processing of the case which needs to be queried against quite a lot so pega provides those column out of the box provide those properties out of the box and auto exposes them for example px commit date time save date time uh, any case any parent key that we will discuss later the create operator name the create operator id right so when it was updated or who updated these are very common information the case id for example py id should be there somewhere in this table see py id that is the case id so all those properties which are necessary for the case processing of pega pega auto exposes them all those properties that you add they automatically go in the blob unless you expose them okay pega uses the blob to store the data for efficiency efficiency not for memory only see when you are opening a case right if we need to open every column that's going to be expensive than opening all the column together in uh, basically all the values in one column so blob makes it efficient but if you expose every property that you add that will add an overhead because the default feature of the K pega is that it keeps the values whatever value you have that it keeps the value in the blob now it has to every time if you expose a property and you save a new case it is going to read the content of the blob and store it separately that's an overhead so this a fine balance is needed what you are exposing for reporting must be uh, basically kind of uh, something that you cannot live without you only expose the properties on which you are reporting and which is important not all the properties okay some properties are better kept with the case and they are read from the case only when you open the case then only you are reading those properties from the case window so this is automatically co covered by pega pega automatically reads the data when you open a case from the blobs and it actually decodes that and that shows you on the screen you can also see that on the clipboard uh, obviously when you're debugging nobody will see it on the clipboard in production okay so that's the case mechanism okay the the other day we learned about the report a little bit so whenever you are creating a report on unexposed property that will not work it will give you an error especially if you are adding that as a filter condition because then pega has to decompress and uh, basically decompress that and then filter it that means pega will actually go through all the table content all every case to try to decompress and then check if the cid this exists there or not for example so it has to be exposed so that pega doesn't traverse through all the columns all the rows in the table basically all the case types that's one thing second we discussed about uh, um, certain um, certain schemas in pega we discussed about pega rules schema during installation from the first or second session we discussed about pega data
and we discussed about customer all those data tables that we have created they all are created in customer we saw them because these are flat this is used for the flat table structure and treated as external table which means that you cannot have blob mega data can have blob whenever you need to store blob you need to create your table in mega data schema why do we need a blob sometime we have structured properties for example we have customer customer is a page property now how will you create the customer in the table right or customer list these are basically structure how many column will you create it's undefined so those things are better stored as a as a structure in the blob so whenever you need to use uh, need to store structured data you could or embedded data you should use pega data schema to create your table because there is a feature to have blob in there pega rules is used for rules storage whatever rules when rule activity section you write or whatever is available out of the box from pega they all reside in the pega rules database or data schema this is just a schema basically in the same database so pega rules is used for rules you don't do anything there pega data and customer data pega data by default see these <coughs> case cases are, are going to have the embedded data right so they are using blob so they all are created into pega data schema if you look at look at the table corresponding to work class this is stored in the pega data schema if you look at the table corresponding to your class customer class data class it is going to be stored in the customer because it doesn't need to have any uh, structured data stored or it doesn't need to have um, uh, basically embedded data stored it's a flat table every call every basically detail or every data all the data is stored into columns individual columns of their individual uh, independent type okay it can be date it can be numeric it can be anything so for flat storage we need customer data so that's the storage mechanism in pega we learned about the optimization that creates another column in the table that you could use for the reporting uh, we'll keep this one basically this is some sort because it's mostly talking about the storage and we have covered that how the data and everything is getting stored in the next session we will explore reporting further right we will talk about various concept of reporting uh, all those options which are there right so that's what we will cover in the next session this session concludes here